We've seen LeBron do incredible things in the regular season and in the playoffs and have it not be enough for his team. So who is this year hinging on? I mean, it really comes down to how Anthony Davis can play. If he can get back to the level he played in year one in L.A. where he played in more than 80 percent of the Lakers games and obviously helped them win that championship in the bubble the last two years he's missed more games than he's played in that's been a major problem and you know LeBron James will certainly be part of that and then figuring out where you go from there because there's a glut of guards going on with this team right now obviously we know Russell Westbrook as of right now will be with the Lakers to start the year they signed Dennis Schroeder who's trying to make good after you know a tough time in Boston last year you have Kendrick Nunn who's trying to come back and I'm told that they're going to not put point guard duties mm. on his plate because they feel like they just want to get his confidence back as a scorer. And Pat Beverly is going to be their primary wing defender in order to preserve his energy. You take him off playing point guard duties as well. Mm. So listen, there's a lot of question That's marks with this team for sure. Biggest question mark for me, though, is whether Anthony Davis can return to the guy he yeah. was a couple years ago. That, that's, that, that to me is it, Zach. Yeah, I mean, if they get 120 games combined from LeBron and AD, I think this team has a really high floor. I think they're in the playoffs. It's a four, It's hard to see them winning fewer than 45 games. And you get a puncher's chance in a first-round playoff series. Nobody wants to face those two guys at full strength. But I think to win two, three, four playoff series, which is what you're trying to do when you have LeBron James at age 37, this team is still a move away from having a roster constructed to do that. So to answer the first question, I think it's the, it hinges on, more than anyone else, Rob Polinka and the basketball gods providing some sort of mid-season, early-season something trade that reshapes this roster. Because the Lakers, are, they still haven't given up hope of, of trying to trade Russ for pieces that fit better, but there just isn't something apparently right now that works. And I, I, I think without that, they're still short of being a real inner circle contender, even if LeBron and AD are LeBron and AD. Hmm. They have no shooting, Zach. We're in an era where you absolutely have to have shooting to compete in the NBA. It's not how good you're shooting. It's not how much shooting you have. It's like, how elite is it? They have no shooting. I don't know how they're going to do it. I mean, Dave just, Dave just illustrated a plan, which sounds like a good thing to present in a nice white paper about Beverly will be this guy and none will be this guy. That makes sense until you realize you're asking a whole bunch of guys to play out of position, guard guys much bigger than them, and none of them can shoot. Mm. I mean, I would argue that I didn't hear Austin Reeves' name. I think Austin Reeves should play yeah, a ton. He's going to play a ton. Well. Mm -hmm. Austin Reeves can't shoot either. Pat Bev was 38% from three the last few years. He can shoot. Pat Bev had the worst three-point shooting season of his career last year. That's, that, that's one season. I think Pat Bev on this team will be a good catch-and-shoot three-point shooter, good enough to be on the floor. Now, the other two spots, to your point, are... TBD. Well, well, they have they had multiple issues to fix from last year. Their defense was atrocious. They didn't have a lot of shooting. You can't fix everything all at once. They've attempted to fix the defense first or at least get better on defense. But it's what we talked about before. It comes down to availability. And Anthony Davis, as you noted, Dave, has, has, play, has missed more games than he's played in. Um, if he's on the court, they have a better defense and theoretically a better offense just because he of the way he and LeBron can play together. But I think the the biggest issues for them is they they don't have a lot of optionality in terms of improving. They don't have a lot of assets. They have the two draft picks we've talked about, but they've also in recent trade conversations that shown an unwillingness to add salary beyond this year because they're trying to preserve as much space for next year when presumably you could add a max free agent like let's say a Kyrie Irving or somebody in that, that vein a Draymon Green um, th that is those are two issues they have not budged on thus far they have to in in this is what happened last year with the trade deadline. You have to give the reason. You have to give the Lakers a reason to do it. They have to mm. play well enough to put themselves in a position where they feel confident making one of those moves to compromise either the draft picks or the cap space. So that's going to be the tough pill to swallow for Lakers fans, though, because they are going into the year with the acknowledgement that this is not a championship team, and we have built our entire reputation, what we stand for as, as an organization, is raising championship banners. And thus far, without making that move, pulling that lever, calling it in, calling Utah, making that move, they are saying, we just aren't there right now. Man, the Lakers are such a mess. Everyone's got their own plan to fix them. Lakers fans need to give up when it comes to trading Westbrook. You're not going to get any value back for him. You need to give stuff away just to get him off your team. So the Lakers are going to eat his salary for one year. They would rather bench him. They would rather send him home than trade him. So I don't know what Zach Lowe is talking about. You're not going to get anything for Westbrook. 
get that idea out of your head. Either he plays for you on the court or he's such a negative that you just bench him and he's off the team. There is no in-between. You're not going to get Miles Turner or Buddy Heald. Those are two players that are better than Westbrook. Even if they wanted draft picks, why wouldn't they just trade somewhere else and not have to take on Russ's contract instead of trading to the Lakers, taking on Russ, and getting rid of their best players? If they were rebuilding, they would just go somewhere else. The only way you could trade Russ is if he started this season, played great basketball, and fit well. But if he did all of those things, they would just keep him so he's not being traded. When it comes to AD, he can get back to what he once was, but this offseason, we saw videos of him saying he didn't even touch a basketball for months. I haven't shot a basketball since on the final, April, good one. like maybe like April 5th. Like were you actually trying to... So I think we're getting the same AD that we've got the past two years. But as always, I want to hear from you guys in the comment section down below. Do you think that AD can get back to the form he was at in the NBA bubble? Or do you think we're getting the same old AD? And leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more NBA content just like this. And I will see you in the next upload.